We're doing some remodeling in a home here, and this is a doorway to an attached garage. We removed the sheet of paneling, and we removed all the old pink fiberglass insulation. But here is a classic situation. We go into this uh, short stud cavity up here, and I'm going to take a piece of cardboard that's an eighth inch, and you're going to see that it will slide all the way up into the attic space. So there, in this case, it's, um, I would say about a three sixteenths of an inch, somewhere between an eighth and three sixteenths of an inch gap here. Like you see that just slide right on up again. And so all day long, during the heating season, hot air is moving into that stud cavity, somewhat slowed down by the old fiberglass insulation but it has a clear passageway up into the attic. Now the ways to correct this are of course to seal the attic. We'd have to take caulk or foam spray and go over every single exterior top plate as well as internal wall top plate. Or this stud cavity could be dense packed with cellulose fiber. The dense packing is going to, under pressure, move those cellulose fibers up into these cracks and any cracks for that matter until they are actually, uh, for all intents and purposes, sealed. So we prefer to use spray foam uh, where it cuts down on labor costs, but because of the cost of spray foam, uh, dense packing, cellulose insulation is probably the most economical, best way to seal any stud cavities, whether it be retrofitting an older home like this or new construction. It's also worth mentioning that with fiberglass insulation, the airflow is not significantly retarded. And as a result, whenever we have these air gaps, fiberglass insulation's R value is greatly decreased. Because while fiberglass has an R value somewhere between 3 and 3.5, it's greatly reduced if there's any airflow through it. Dense packing cellulose, of course, prevents airflow, and so cellulose will always maintain its R value under just about any circumstance. And then finally, someone wants to know probably why did these gaps get put there? I mean, if that was plasterboard or drywall put up against the stud during the construction, why is there now a gap? The reason there is a gap is because lumber always dries out and shrinks. Um, depending on the era when your home was built, this was a bigger problem uh, during certain times than it is others, but the quality of lumber and construction is always suspect and it depends on your builder. And we have seen brand new homes, only a year or so old, that already have these gaps and almost every top plate, creating a huge loss of energy flow up into their uh, attic space.